Okay, today we're going to be doing a quick drop shadow tutorial. I have my little key logger going on down here on the left hand side. So if you're wondering what I'm pressing, you can just look down there. And we're going to be working on doing sort of realistic looking drop shadows like you see here. So most drop shadows are just really consistent all the way around and don't really go into having sort of feathered out edges like this. And so we're going to go in how to make a realistic looking drop shadow like this. So first we're going to start with our bird cutout, okay? And so you're going to want to have the image cut out on a white background or some other color, but generally white is good for this. And we're going to start by double clicking on our bird, going down to drop shadow, clicking on that layer, and I just like to put out the distance a little bit just so I can see what I'm doing. And you don't want to make this really fuzzy off the bat with the size here. You're going to want to start this pretty low, I usually go about five. So we're gonna click OK for that, and now we have our drop shadow there, but it's just an effect on our bird layer. And what we wanna do is we wanna put this drop shadow on its own layer. So we're gonna right click on that, go to Create Layer, click OK, and now our shadow is on its own layer. So I'm just gonna rename this shadow real quick so we don't get confused. And now we basically want to sort of flatten this out so it looks like it's lying on the f floor next to this bird. So I'm gonna control T on that to transform the shadow real quick. Drop that down. And if you were having the light source come from directly in front of the bird, that would be about as much adjustment as you need to do on that. But since we're looking at our image and the light source is over on the right hand side here, the shadow should really be tilting over onto the left a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to have that layer selected again. We're going to go up to Edit, Transform, and Skew, and we're going to pull this over to the left. So the shadow looks like it's sort of leaning off to the left here, which matches our light source. And you can take a little bit of time to get this exactly how you want it, but just for the sake of the tutorial, we're going to say that that's okay. Now, one of the complicated areas down here is the feet, and it's going to be hard to get the feet to match up really well with this bird right now. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to hide the bird for a second. We're actually going to do the uh, feet separately. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my little eraser. You're going to want to make sure you have a feathered edge on that. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to go ahead and erase these feet right now because we don't want to have to deal with those. We're going to deal with those in just a second. We're just going to do the main body of the bird first. Okay, so now that we have those feet gone, we can go ahead and put the bird back, move our shadow around a little bit more here so it looks like it's sort of sitting in the right place. And now we're going to add some of our effects that are going to make this shadow look better than a typical drop shadow. This is usually where people stop, but we're going to take it to the next level. So we're going to go up to Filter, and if you're in Photoshop uh, CS6, everything is going to be in the Blur menu, and CC added this Blur Gallery menu. And so you're not going to see this if you have CS6. This is a CC only menu okay so but the features that we need are still in cs6 they're just all under the blur menu so we're going to start with a little bit of a surface blur and you can do this as much or as little as you like but this basically just softens up the edges a little bit so that the edges of your drop shadow are not going to be that stiff so we're going to click ok on that um, you'll set that however you want and then next we're going to go to Blur Gallery and we're going to look for the Tilt Shift effect. And in CS6 this is just under Blur. So Tilt Shift and now you see we bring up this menu here and this is what lets us adjust the blur of the shadow. So you generally want to put the middle of this where you want the edges to be the hardest. And then we're going to tilt this in the direction that our shadow is leaning. I'm going to bring this down and you'll kind of figure out how to use this tool once you play around with it a little bit. So for now you can just kind of watch me do this, but when you play around with this you'll figure out how it works. And then to increase the blur you twist this dial up here and that's going to make that nice and blurry as that goes out. So now we're fading from a hard edge to a softer edge, which is what you're going to see in a more natural shadow. So that's good for this. I'm going to go ahead and enter on that. 
And the next step we're going to do is we need to do the feet now. So I'm going to select my bird layer. We're going to go up and get the lasso tool real quick. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit here and lasso these feet. Oops, and I want to get both of those in one go. So I'm going to go back, do this again. There we go. Just do this really quickly. And I'm going to copy that. And then I'm going to Control Shift V to paste in place. So that just put those feet on their own layer over here. And now if I turn off the bird, you'll see that we have the feet on their own layer. So we're going to go ahead and create another shadow just for these feet. OK, so double click on that. Go to drop shadow. I'm going to turn the size all the way down because I want those to look pretty crispy. Maybe just go a two there. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to put that on its own layer. And now we can move these feet around. Oh, no. I want to move the feet shadow. And now we can move this around. And so what I really need to do is I need to make it so that these feet are just bending down a little bit, but only in the middle. Because if I move this whole thing down, you'll see that it looks like the bird is floating now, and, and we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and move that back where it should be. And then we're going to do a puppet warp on this feet layer. So we're going to go up to Edit, Puppet Warp. OK, and then we're going to put a point on the very tips where we want the shadow to stay. And then we're going to put another couple points in the middle which is the part that we want to pull down so it's visible. So now if I go down on this, we're going to pull that down a little bit so you can, it looks like the shadow's falling on the floor. We're going to do the same over here. And then these other points that we put on the tips is going to keep those in place so that it looks like that nail is hitting the floor. We're going to go enter on that. So that basically, looks a little bit more realistic for the feet there and then the shadow looks like this needs to be adjusted a little bit more over to the side and there we go so we're done with this feet layer now so we can go ahead and delete that we can merge our two shadow layers because um, those pretty much only need to be on one layer so i'm going to go ahead and merge those turn our bird back on and we can see that that's a pretty good looking drop shadow and the last effect that I would do on this is people usually have their shadows way too dark most drop shadows are you know just a little bit too noticeable you want the object to look like it's naturally you know in a scene instead of just on a flat background but you don't want the drop shadow to be super noticeable so I'm gonna go ahead and turn the opacity down on that drop shadow quite a bit and then I also lastly I'm gonna add a little bit of an effect where it's darker where the shadow is falling closer and then lighter as it goes off so what I'm gonna do and actually if I'm looking at these feet real quick it looks like those nails aren't quite lining up so I'm gonna drag grab our shadow and that actually should be falling behind the bird and then I'm gonna adjust that just a little bit so it looks like it's meeting up right with those nail points that's great Okay, now I want this to be a little bit darker in here and then fade off. So I'm going to grab the shadow. I'm just going to duplicate it. Oops, not delete it, duplicate it. And then what that effectively did was that doubled the opacity of the shadow because we have two layered up here. I'm going to select one. I'm going to pull out my eraser. Make sure you have a feathered edge. And then I'm going to make that nice and big. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to erase the majority of the second shadow. So now you'll see that we just added a little bit of darkness in this area here. And that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and combine those two merge layers. And now we have a pretty good looking drop shadow behind this bird. So that's my quick drop shadow tutorial to create a little bit more advanced and natural looking drop shadows. I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, go ahead and add any uh, questions or comments that you have in the comments below. And if you thought that this video was useful, please give me a like or a thumbs up. And I'm going to try to come out with a few more of these videos and hopefully help people out a little bit. So there you go and have a good day, guys.